uh, good evening. Uh, so I'm very glad to be here. So a uh, disclaimer first. Different from the previous two speakers who have shared many uh, interesting tricks, I have only two proposals granted. So I work in machine learning. Therefore, in the machine learning jargon, this is a small sample size case. Therefore, my talk will be biased and tend to overfit. Uh, so I will talk about the birth of my first proposal. When I wrote down this title, I thought of my first child. By the way, while I have only two proposals, I have also the same number of children so far. <laughs> so uh, I think about uh, when I decide to have my first child, I will ask myself, am I ready? I'd better get married. And uh, we, we need to be both healthy. Right? So, and then next, my wife got pregnant. And we need to make some preliminary decisions, such as which hospital should we choose. And then lots of checkups, and finally giving birth. Of course, there are also many uh, miscellaneous stuff we need to deal with, like uh, diapers, you know, buy clothes, and buy bed, and so uh, cradle. Right? And so lots of uh, miscellaneous stuff we need to handle. And then here is my first proposal. It is uh, it's, uh, supported under the ECS and uh, have score five. By drawing analogy with the birth of my first child, I try to list down the important factors that uh, contribute to the birth of my first proposal. The first uh, important factor uh, to me is the track record, which I considered as a prerequisite we teach, right? So we know some courses we have prerequisite, especially for junior staff like me, I think the track record is a prerequisite for a successful proposal. So this track record shows that we have the necessary expertise to do the job we have uh, proposed in our proposal. And then next, that is a proposal writing process. I, uh, need, firstly, I need to decide what will be the topic I, I would like to work on. This is uh, the most important uh, part to me, just like uh, to find a good topic for our PhD student. And then next, I will consider to have some preliminary works. This is mainly to show the feasibility and to show that we have thought about the ideas and, and have done some studies. And then for the third stage, I will generate more ideas and then propose some directions of possible solutions and then package these kind of ideas and the possible solutions into an interesting story to deliver. And similar, similar to the birth of my child, there are also many miscellaneous stuff that we must take care of before submitting a proposal. So in the following, I will talk about these uh, factors one by one. We are all good at writing uh, papers. So for writing a proposal, a uh, track record is a very important factor to me. So this is a key difference between writing a proposal and a paper. For a paper, we can do experiments. We can provide a proof, and we can uh, compare with other methods to show, to convince the reviewers to get our papers accepted. But for a proposal, most of the things we have listed in this proposal are something that has not been done. Therefore, it is very important to show that we have the expertise to do the job that we have described in our proposal. So I have, I have read the comments from the reviewers carefully when I received the reviews for my proposal. So here uh, are some uh, excerpts from the comments. One of the reviewers said the strong track record of the PI 
give confidence that this project will be a success, right? So this is a very different from paper, right? From paper, they judge from the results, from the methods to see whether this is a good paper. But for a proposal, they need to judge whether this project will be a success. So it's more challenging. By having a solid track record, this makes the reviewer's job much easier. And another reviewer said, I'm familiar with a number of the PI's papers and have found them of excellent quality. So this is another good news. The quality of our previous work also gave the reviewers confidence to give a higher score. And another reviewer said the PI has a strong record, track record of contributions in this area and the proposed research is along the line of directions. So we can see by having a strong track record, this will make the reviewers have more confidence on our proposal and give us higher uh, rating and also to justify their, uh, their ratings in their reviews much easier. So here is, uh, uh, so let us look at my track record. In the past, I have focused on publish, publishing papers with uh, a fo a focusing on the three keywords. The first one is machine learning based on tensor representation. So I call tensor-based learning. So tensor is an uh, extension of vector and matrix. Vector is 1D and ten uh, matrix is 2D and tensor are higher multi-dimensional, more than 2Ds. And secondly, I focus on feature extraction problem, especially learning a lower dimensional subspace from a higher dimensional input space. And the third point is I work on only multi-dimensional data. That is, I deal with two-dimensional data, three-dimensional data, and four-dimensional data. So I work, I focus on multi-dimensional data. And just before, uh, just after submitting my first proposal, I also finished a monograph on the topic I, that I have been working on for many years. That is a book on the right. And uh, uh, as the reviewer noticed, I have uh, some good citations, uh, numbers, for some of the key papers. For example, the best one I have uh, is uh, the multilinear PCA paper has uh, more than uh, 300 citations. So this helps to convince the reviewer that I can do a good job. So, so in this uh, track record, I think the, as my advice, uh, advisor have told me many times, the quality is much more important than the quantity because this will give people confidence and makes your signal to noise ratio of our outputs much higher. And finally, as a junior researcher, it will be uh, of our own advantage if we can put up a proposal along the same line of our track record. So the track record, we, can, we, need, to, we need years to build. But when we join a new university and when we start to write the proposal, basically you can do almost nothing about your track record. That is only for your future proposals we can still build. But for the, when we join a new university and start to write a proposal, the first difficult decision we need to make is the topic. What topic to choose to write our proposal? As I said, it will be of our own interest to choose a topic along the line of our own research focus. It will be also advantage, uh, advantageous to choose a topic that has the potentials of big impact. Therefore, it is good to relate to a hot topic when possible. And thirdly, it will be good to have a balance of theory and practice since we are in the engineering uh, panel. So it will be good to have some solid theoretical contributions to show the depths and to show that we have made significant contributions. And it is also important to uh, solve a real problem since we are, uh, we are in the engineering panel. 
And we know the reviewers, they are very busy people, and they review many, many proposals in a day, or, or in, in a few hours. Therefore, it is very important to make our proposal uh, novel and interesting, so that we can attract the reviewers' attention, or make them uh, feel more excited when reading our proposals and writing comments. And finally, for the topic we have chosen, it would be good to have some preliminary results. So we will talk about the preliminary results in the uh, second point. So now let us look at the, the topic I have uh, uh, chosen for my first proposal. The title of my proposal is the topic of my proposal, which is dimensionality reduction for learning correlations between big multi-dimensional data. So we can analyze this title and uh, also see why I write on this title. As I mentioned, I have focused on feature extraction, which is a dimensionality reduction problem in the past, uh, uh, past few years. And I also focus on multi-dimensional data. So you can see the first two keywords and last two keywords is something that I have been working on for many, many years. That is my research focus. And the, the keywords in the middle, learning correlations, that is uh, the particular problem I put up in this proposal. And I also have a preliminary paper, a conference paper on this topic. And finally, the word big, big, right? Big multi-dimensional data. That is trying to relate my proposal to a hot topic so that we can claim a bigger impact of our proposal, which uh, we, uh, in, our, in my case, I chose uh, the big data as a, uh, as a hot topic to relate my proposal to. After deciding a topic, that is uh, the most important decision we have made. It will be good to have some preliminary works, which can include both published works and some preliminary study. So my uh, proposal have both parts. So this is another excerpt from the uh, reviewer's comment. It says, it builds on the PI's recent contributions on multilinear CCA. So this is my uh, conference paper, a top conference paper published in the same year, a few months before submitting the proposal. So this is a case of a preliminary results in a published work, published conference paper. And I also uh, uh, carried out some preliminary studies to show the feasibility and read, uh, to show the feasibility of the solutions I proposed, and also to show the readiness of carrying out the uh, described or proposed uh, works in my proposal. And after having decided the topic and also have some preliminary results in hand, I will next try to write the full story of my proposal. Usually, I started with uh, brainstorming, generate many, many ideas. And then I examine them one by one. I ask myself, is this one realistic? Or is it too big? Is it too simple? Or is it too difficult or too naive? Then after a few rounds of uh, iteration, usually I will narrow down and filter out many ideas and keep only a few of them. After deciding on the possible ideas to work on, then we need to propose and tr need to lay out some feasible solution, uh, directions of solutions. Here, we are not going to propose or, or, lay, or, or write the actual solutions, because if you have the solutions already, then your work is already done, right? So there's no reason your proposal should be funded. So here, we need to lay down the feasible directions of our solutions. And uh, after we having these more ideas, uh, a few more ideas, and also directions of uh, feasible solutions, 
the next thing we need to do is to do packaging. It will be of our own interest to do it in a systematic way because this will make the reviewers job much easier, make our proposals easier to follow as we, as we know, right? So the reviewers, they are very busy people. They have very limited time. So if we write it in a systematic way, it will be much easier for them to follow our proposal. And secondly, it will be also good to include enough details to show that we have some resource on the ideas, or on the possible solutions, or even possible difficulties. And sometimes they will see possible failures of our proposal. And uh, lastly, it would be good to relate our proposal to our previous works whenever possible. This is also to show the feasibility. And this is the story of my proposal as shown on the lower right. Uh, firstly, I have some preliminary results on two sets of 2D data. And then I, I put up my proposal in three phases. The first phase is about two sets of multi-dimensional data with more than two dimensions. And the second phase is about more than two sets of data, but the data is still 2D. And in the phase three, I put the most uh, complicated case with more than two sets of data, and the data are multi-dimensional, more than 2D. And for the data, it's good to have a mix of old data that have been worked on to give confidence, and also some new data so that to show that I'm exploring new areas. And finally, when we have the full story, it's almost ready to submit the full proposal. For the full proposal, the most important piece is abstract uh, to me. That is uh, uh, also uh, in the public domain. It will be released to the public. And for the objectives, that is the most uh, compact summary of our, uh, a few, just a few lines of our whole proposal. And for the introduction, I will consider as a, a, a extended abstract and focus on more on the background and motivations. And lastly, for the body, that is the extended version of our uh, abstract. And for, of course, like the birth of the baby, we need to take care of some miscellaneous stuff. And it would be the best to learn these kind of standards from our seniors. And last but not least, uh, we we need to get some comments from others to, to improve our proposal. And here I want to thank Prof Liu, Prof Yun, and Prof Liang who have uh, uh, provided uh, tremendous help for my, uh, to my pro pro first proposal. So to summarize, uh, from my personal opinion, the following factors are the most important to a successful uh, proposal, especially for junior uh, academics like, uh, like me. So a solid track record is are considered uh, as a prerequisite to me to show the confidence. And then it's critical to find a good topic to work on. And this will largely depend on how successful our proposal will be. And then we need to have some pr preliminary works so that uh, to show the, also to show the feasibility and sh to show that we have uh, thought about the problems carefully. And lastly, we need to have a uh, package our ideas and the solutions into an interesting and sound story to tell. And lastly, make sure that our submission is a standard uh, uh, submission that follow all the requirements of the RGC. And that's all, thank you, and uh, good luck to all our uh, proposals. Thank you. Thank you.